Hello everyone, my name is Lori Quiller and welcome to the Air Force Culture and Language Center's Facebook Live event for June. Joining us today is Ms. Gloria Milner, AFCLC's Program Manager for the eMentor Language Training and Colonel Sarah Russ, a, a Spanish and Korea speaking LEAP Scholar based in Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. Ms. Milner is AFCLC's eMentor Language Training Program Manager. She leads a multifunctional team overseeing more than 1,100 training events a year. E-Mentor lesson content is infused with topics culturally relevant to regions where airmen and or space force guardians may be expected to operate seamlessly with an air and space forces populations around the world. Courses enable scholars to not only develop languages skills, but also to apply skills in an operational environment. Colonel Sarah Russ is the mobilization assistant to the commander of 12th Air Forces, Air Forces Southern at Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. She joined the Air Force in 1994 as a distinguished graduate of the Officer Training School. She's also a distinguished graduate of both Transportation Officer School and C-130 Instructor Navigator Training. She earned her navigator wings in 1997 and flew as a C-130 and EC-130 instructor navigator. She transitioned to the Air Force Reserve in 2004 and has served as air attache at three U.S. embassies, assistant professor, and in staff assignments at the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command and U.S. Northern Command. She also played a critical role in establishing U.S. Space Command as an initial cadre of battle watch commanders. Colonel Russ is a senior navigator with more than 1,400 flying hours in various aircraft and fully joint qualified. She is a LEAP scholar and a foreign area officer who speaks Korean and Spanish. Before we begin, we ask that our audience observe a few simple rules. Maintain the principles and standards of professional behavior and communication. Please mute your mics while others are speaking. Hold questions until the end of the brief when you may unmute your mics and ask your questions. You may also enter your questions into the chat window. Follow proper OPSEC procedures and guidance and remain cognizant that Facebook is an unclassified medium. With these in mind, let's get started. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today in the Air Force's Global Classroom. So let's begin with you, Ms. Milner. Can you explain just what eMentor is? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Lori. Okay, so the eMentor program is just one of many of the uh, Air Force Culture and Language Center's education tools. Um, AFCLC develops cross-culturally competent airmen and guardians for utilization in critical missions anytime, anywhere through, through eMentor. Um, eMentor is fully online language program is developed in-house by experienced curriculum developers. Uh, the courses focus on the 12 domains of culture model and the course content is delivered by a language vendor. The language vendor ha has instructors with academic background in the social science. Courses are available in nine 12 languages and dialects, all of which are specified on the Air Force strategic language list. So as you say, Lori, you the course leap scholars prepare for discussions with partner military and host nation populations. Um, the, what is so great about the courses, one of the things that's great about the leap mentor course that, is that they take place at times convenient for each airman's schedule. Um, as you mentioned, mentioned also, the content is infused with topics culturally relevant to the regions where airmen may be expected to operate with air forces and populations around the world. Um, again, uh, eMentor has um, a, a lot of uniqueness about it, um, but one, uh, another thing that has really contributed to scholar success in the program is that their course schedules can be developed to cater to dynamic operation, operational tempos, enabling some airmen, many airmen that probably otherwise would not be able to take a course, but um, these airmen are located across many different time zones and can take courses at prearranged days and times. Um, several scholars um, on a daily basis reach out to us with, um, they have work schedules that are quite um, challenging 
and a little outside the normal 0700 to maybe 1700 uh, window. So, mm -hmm. um, but even this course provides that opportunity uh, for them to take a course um, um, because again, we can cater to those dynamic, a uh, little bit different from outside the norm schedules. And um, really, if it wasn't for that flexibility that we allow that the program provides, then they probably wouldn't be able to take a course at all. So um, that, that's a huge uh, benefit of the program. And of course, the members, many members take advantage of that, which is to their benefit as well. Uh, courses are delivered through an engaging classroom sessions using an interactive whiteboard and real-time audio video. Of course, the organized one-on-one -on -one or with groups of two to four students. We typically offer these scores at a two plus or below and advanced courses for scholars with DLPT scores of three, three or higher. Each course is set up to have bi-weekly two-hour sessions scheduled as a 10-week course for those developmental scholars. So the ones that are uh, need to focus on, you know, a little bit, go a little bit deeper on those mm -hmm. four modalities. And then for the um, higher level scholars, the advanced scholars, we have, it's more, it's, a, it's still bi-weekly two-hour sessions, but it ends up being a three-week course. Again, each course targets growth in all of the modalities. So that's listening, speaking, reading, and writing. And at the end of the course, students are scored one to 20 for each modality. Um, so it's truly a comprehensive assessment like uh, no other. It uh, stands out and um, assessments have validated uh, the emitter, I'm sorry, the DLPT scores. Um, uh, and, you know, most of the time they, they are right on, on, but if they're not, then it's because, you know, again, this is a much more deeper, much more granular look at um, each modality. So it's, it's a true assessment of their scores, of their proficiency. I have to think, Ms. Milner, that the fact that it doesn't have office hours, traditional office hours, has to be a uh, really good selling point, too, for the LEAP scholars. Yes, it is. It is. It is. That flexibility is key. Um, as I said, as I stated, many scholars would not be able to take complete courses if it were not for that. So um, it's been a true um, that's it, you know, a huge a positive part of the program that um, many scholars have raved about. And, um, and so we, because it, it really, it makes a difference, I think, between our program and many others that are out there. And the e-mentor program is a great way for our LEAP scholars to boost their language profic proficiency by participating, correct? Oh, most definitely. Um, thousands of LEAP scholars and, and foreign area officers have taken advantage of the this resource, uh, Lori, and everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I have some stats. So since 2017, uh, 4,765 LEAP scholars and FAOs have taken e-mentor courses, totaling 153,214 e-mentor course hours with a 90% completion rate. So um, mm -hmm. students are committing to the courses and, you know, again, depend, it doesn't matter the, the proficiency score, they're committing to, you know, the fulls, whether it's a 40 hour course or a 12 hour course, they, they stay the course and um, overall satisfaction rate has continuously been 97% or higher. So this is a, they know that it's a great resource. They take advantage of it. And uh, it has really, um, we've seen the difference, you know, scores over time uh, grow, uh, you know, maybe from a two plus to a three, um, over you know minimal time or year year and a half or so because of the commitment that um, many scholars make to this program. I think you said the key word there. It does take a commitment. Um, mm -hmm. How often would you recommend that a leap scholar participate in any mentor program? Well, we've developed a training timeline that dictates how often scholars should take any mentor course once they complete their first course. Most mm -hmm. most. Uh, for the mo most part, the details of the timeline can be found on our lead policy too, by the way, which is sure. kept on the leader site. Um, timeline is based upon their uh, scholars lead level, which is mm -hmm. just an internal tool that we use to kind of track and, and see what their training needs are. Um, but each scholars e mentor training timeline has been developed to ensure that they're taking courses on a consistent basis and within a, within a time frame that, that allows continuous sustainment and enhancement of their skills. And although we provide the training timeline, scholars are encouraged to register 
register for additional courses as desired or as needed, especially if they're preparing for a specific assignment or duty in which they uh, will be using their ERIC skills. And I could talk more about that timeline as well. Um, because what, what happens is when a member goes into uh, interest program, we uh, set, we give them, provide 18 months actually up front for them to, we recommend that they take a course within the first 18 months. And then from that, they're given an assessment, as I said, in, for each e-mentor course. Once they get that assessment, then from that point, we determine when their next course should be. But again, there's always situations or um, just the need that may come about where they may need a course more often than that. And um, we're here for that. You know, they reach out to us or, you know, within our um, ongoing registration periods, you know, we may reach out to them just to see if, okay, you may not be due for a course, but we can still get you. And you said that, I'm sorry, you broke up there for just a second, but within the first 18 months of joining LEAP, joining the program? Yes, yes. Okay. And then from that point, once they complete a course, then we, they'll, they'll help have a timeline that um, we set from there. So they'll know when the next course is due. However, they still have the option to take you know, maybe a, a course in between that if, if they need to or want to. Colonel Russ, are can you, you hear me, us? Lori? Gloria, I can hear you, but I can't see you. There you go. Oh, no. Colonel Russ, are you with us? Yes, I am. I think you had mentioned a real world application for your e-mentor experience. Are you able to share that with us? Of course. Right. First of all, Lori, thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, for me, the e-mentor program really helped me strengthen partnerships with within security cooperation mission. Um, being able to brief and conduct bilateral meetings with partner nation senior leaders. For, for me, it's uh, in Latin America in Spanish and understanding the culture have really enhanced my job as a South Come foreign area officer. They genuinely, the leaders I engage with, they mm -hmm. seem to really appreciate my efforts to communicate, although not you know, fluently, but in, in their native language. And uh, also FCLC was gracious to provide me with additional space A training for Korean when I was serving as air attache in the Indo-Pacific AOR region. I was heading out to Singapore in 2018 to support the US North Korea summit and needed to brush up on Korean. Um, I knew that my job would entail engaging and uh, actually having a, a, a dialogue with the North Korean delegation out in Singapore. Um, although I'm a native Korean speaker, languages, especially vocabulary for me can be a perishable skill set if one doesn't practice for a long time. So I really mm -hmm. owe it to the FCLC for providing the extra instructions outside of my core FAO language, which is Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. Additionally, I got to participate in two bilat exercises with the South Korean military recently. And uh, knowing, knowing the language and the culture intimately really opened doors um, for me. I mean, I've had conversations with them where I may not have had otherwise. And we, we did have English interpreters, but you know, things get lost in translation at times. Sure. But I would imagine that this gave you an opportunity to um, get into a, a position where you wouldn't have been able to before. Absolutely. It really open. it does languages. It, it does mm -hmm. open doors. Right. Right. Is this something that maybe you would recommend um, the e-mentor program to your fellow LEAP scholars and FAOs? Yes, I absolutely recommend it to LEAP scholars and my uh, fellow foreign area officers. Um, the courses I took, I really, over time, 
has played a large role in my becoming a more effective air attache and foreign area officer. Do you feel like it just gives you that extra leg up? Yeah, that and it, it gives, it's given me confidence too. You know, I mean, because in the past where I would study Spanish on my own and go try to brief, whereas I'm not sure if that's really, you know, just Googling some words and, you know, using it. I don't know if that's really used in Latin America, whereas learning Spanish from a native speaker, right, online, mm -hmm. that's really given me the confidence to go out and, and use it. Well, before we take questions from the audience, Ms. Milner, if you're still with us, um, can you let the LEAP scholars who are with us, um, can you tell them how they can request an e-mentor? Ms. Milner, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Can you can you tell us or explain the process to, that LEAP scholars can go through to request an e-mentor? Sure, of course. Um, so just for anyone that doesn't know, um, our courses are managed on a semester system. So at least three times a year, our staff will open up the registration window so that scholars can register, provide their availability and uh, submit for, for a course. So during that registration process, well, as we open the, the registration, window, the language development coordinators here on staff here at the AFCLC will send out an email to all the scholars to let them know that, you know, registration is open. Um, now's the time to take a course if you'd like to take a course or need to take a course. So they will target specifically the scholars that are due for a course, but we also let, you know, other members that aren't due for a course know about the uh, registration window so that, again, if they need a course or desire another course to maybe, you know, a lot of some languages are a little bit more difficult, challenging to learn. So they may want to take an additional course or something. So um, again, our language development coordinators will send out registration notifications and then each scholar will go to their profile in the leader database mm -hmm. or leader site. And um, they will toggle over to the e-mentor tab of their leader profile and then select the availability button. And then that's where they can input all their information, their um, time zone. Of course, the language is pretty much pre-filled or they can um, pre-select that because it's based upon their selected or training, approved training language. And then basically the biggest thing is there just to, for them to add the times and the days of the week that they're available for a course. And there's some requirements with that. But again, once you get into that section of their leader profile, um, the, the guidance is there. Um, then they would just pretty much fill that out. It takes all of maybe five minutes and then submit it. Once it's submitted, our staff will review it and uh, make recommendations to me as the program manager for approval. And then I will review and approve or disapprove, um, and then uh, notify, send that information to the language vendor. But before the information goes to the language vendor, each member, each uh, scholar will receive an email that states whether they were approved for a course or not. Um, and upon receiving that notification, again, within that notification, it'll give them some information about, you know, when they can expect to receive no information or more details about their course from the vendor. So they'll know exactly what what the timeline looks like for them to receive, you know, uh, information about their course. And then, um, so all the expectations from that point on will be clearly spelled out in their approval notification. Okay. So that sounds and simple that, enough. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very simple. It really is, uh, Lori. Again, the registration, uh, when they register for a course, it takes you no know, really no more than five or six minutes. And then, um, we do the rest and they can sit back and wait for a notification from the language vendor of their course schedule. And then um, they'll, and everything will start from that point. Um, and I like to make a plug for the next registration window, which is just right around the corner. Uh, we'll open it up on 5 July. Um, so right after the holiday, um, you know, members should, you know, come back to work or the, the emails will actually go to their work and personal email. But um, they should get an email notifying them that the registration window is open and they can proceed from there. And of course, our staff is here to assist with any 
anything that they need in that process, helping them get the registration completed. That's just a week away. Yes, yes, definitely. Time well, flies. We have, we have a few questions for you ladies, if you're ready. Let's see, um, is, ready? There a, is there a certain modality where e-mentor courses help LEAP scholars the most? Is there a certain modality where it helps the most? Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I, I believe these are from our Facebook watchers. Okay. Well, the course, um, again, it's, uh, it's the focus is on all four modalities. However, if a member needs to focus on one, more one mo modality <laughs> versus the others more, then that's something that they can share with their instructor. And the instructor is trained to, um, you know, assist in that way to, to focus on, you know, to kind of tweak the course so that that member can, you know, get that focus, work in that focus area um, as much as they need to throughout, throughout the course. You know, um, again, mm -hmm. they can initially get into the first day of the course, actually, um, they go through an orientation and then after the orientation, then they should make that known to their instructor um, right away. If there is a weak area or just an area they just really need to focus on, maybe it's not weak, maybe it's just something they need to prepare for, you know, a specific uh, job related assignment or something, then that option is there and they should always share that with the instructor. So if the instructor sees that the scholar needs more work in certain areas then the, the instructor can sort of steer the course in that direction? Yes, yes, okay. but again, scholar, you know, it's a team teamwork. Um, so you wanna make sure they, they, the scholars should always share or communicate their needs as well to the instructor. Okay. You know, if there's specific they need that, not necessarily wait for the instructor to see that. However, the instructor probably will pick up on it and, um, and try to tweak, you know, to make sure they're getting some, working on some of those focus areas, but it's okay. perfectly fine for them to act. Um, the next question is, are immature courses available to other airmen or guardians with language capabilities outside of LEAP, such as FAOs? Now, I'm assuming that this question means LEAP scholar or FAOs that may not be LEAP. I'm hoping I'm, I'm getting that correct. Yes, it is available. Uh, it's based upon mission um, justification. They have to provide mission justification. Um, but yes, it, it, the courses are available to uh, members outside of the LEAP program. Uh, certainly if they have a language skill now, they, they definitely have to have a language skill set already. Um, we won't, you know, they have to have a DLPT on file and then just provide a, a justification, uh, a mission justification for uh, their request. And that would just be a, an email to, to our org box and we can provide that to them um, as well. Okay. Via this uh, chat or Facebook, so. And Colonel Russ, this, this question is directed to you. What has been your biggest takeaway from the e-mentor program? Um, biggest takeaway, I think it's, uh, um, you know, you have to do the work, right? Because I've, mm -hmm. I've taken, a lot of your mentor courses over time that sometimes I'm so busy. I felt like I, I was just going through the motion of attending the class. I've, you know, I've, I'll be honest. I go, okay, well, I did it. And whereas I wasn't putting in the work, I'd be um, just showing up for a class where I didn't really get much out of it because it's really what you put in, right? And it's right. proportional to the outcome. So, I think you, you, the member has to do the work. You can't just show up for class. You have to come to class prepared. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. And this next, these next two questions are also for you, Colonel Russ, and they are from Chris Chesser, our language division uh, director. Um, it says uh, two questions. As a reservist, what advice do you have for total force airmen seeking opportunities to use their language skills? And if you wanna answer that one or I can go ahead and give you the second one. 
Uh, sure. Um, I, you know, if you are FAO qualified, I would recommend if you're not a FAO already um, that you apply to become a FAO because it really does open a lot of billets and TDY opportunities. And uh, But not everyone is a FAO qualified, right? Because you have to have a degree and certain experience. Um, I say just keep your skill set sharp. So when you're called, you know, when because you never know when that call is going to come in handy, right? When that call is right. going to come in to say, hey, could you augment this conference we're holding? We need a Korean speaker. We need a Japanese speaker. In fact, that call is uh, has come in in September. Our chief of staff, General Brown, is hosting an international air chiefs conference. And they're, you know, the half A1 is looking for ARC members to augment the conference with the language support. So I say keep your you know skill set sharp. I would assume it's like any other um, mission. You never know when you're going to get called to right. To serve. Yeah. And Chris has one more question for you, ma'am. Um, how have have your Spanish and Korean language skills helped you more effectively advise senior leaders? Well, I think uh, you can't just know the language and, you know, become uh, an effective communicator or effective foreign area officer or lead scholar. You really have to know the trade, right? Mm -hmm. For me, um, at Half South, I've been the WPS lead. So I, I, I have to know my trade to really speak and brief in Spanish, addressing questions from the partner nation air chiefs. So... What, number one, know your trade, you know, whether it's aircraft maintenance or logistics. And two, um, you know, be, I think you have to be a little strategic, right? Don't, don't just translate or interpret the language and uh, also know our national security and defense strategy, you know, know our higher headquarters strategy well enough so that you can articulate well in whether it's Spanish or Japanese. Right. And he says, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay. Do we have anyone with any other questions? We've got the floor open. Let's see, we have one more. Nope, no more questions. Okay. Well, with that, thank you, um, Ms. Milner and Colonel Russ. Thank you so much for your time and your talents today. Um, and I would also like to thank everyone else for joining us. Um, my outreach partner behind the scenes, Ms. Michaela McCurry, and the many, many of you who have joined us today for this episode of the Air Force's Global Classroom. And always remember, we are AFCLC. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, everyone. All right.